on high. Amen. Amen. The king is here. The king is here. All right, so chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt of the fold of an ass. Okay. So, Zechariah, years ago, prophesied that the king is coming. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And he specifically says, Thy king cometh. He says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. So, he was speaking to Israel. He was speaking to Israel in his prophecy and saying, Rejoice because your king cometh. And not just cometh, but Zechariah actually prophesied, you know, exactly, you know, a sign that they should look for. And the sign that they were supposed to look for was that he was going to be riding upon a young donkey. Amen. He was going to be coming through upon a young donkey donkey. So the Jews had no excuse. No excuse. You know, because they, they followed the Old Testament. They followed the Old Testament and they were written, no, they were very, 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 very committed to the Old Testament. So they knew the prophecies. Amen? Amen. And so if they were actually following this prophecy, then they had no excuse when Jesus came because the sign was given amen that he will be coming riding up on the young donkey right. so this actually took place and even today we still have those who don't believe in Jesus Christ yes. amen? amen and the Bible says the king is coming yes. the Messiah is coming yes. and he is riding coming through upon the young coal. Right. Amen. And this actually came to pass. So this was prophesied years ago. Amen. Before Jesus even came in the flesh. Yes. Right. Amen. And so when this happened, when this took place, then it should have been that they were ready to receive Jesus having known the prophecy that was prophesied right. years ago. Right. Amen. So let's go over now into the book of St. Matthew chapter 21. St. Matthew chapter 21. And we're starting from verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 21. Starting from verse 1. And it reads, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway he shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Yes. And if any man say aught unto you, he shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet which is what we just read in the book of Zechariah. Amen. So Jesus, he did this and fulfilled the scripture that was prophesied years ago in the book that we just read, the book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 and it says, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a cold, the fold of an ass. Yeah. And listen, that's a young cold, a young donkey. Amen. And so the Bible actually spoke about the prophecy. And then here we see the prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the cold and put on them 
their clothes and they set him thereon. So they set Jesus on the young donkey. We're losing volume. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. 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 So the Bible declares that as Jesus was heading to Jerusalem, he sent his disciples to go and to get the, the young animals so he could fulfill the prophecy that was spoken years ago before he was born in the flesh. And so the Bible says, as he did that, there was a crowd gathered. But this crowd was not just, um, just popped up out of nowhere. Actually, if we go in the book of John, we'll see in the 12th chapter that Jesus, the previous day, had gone to visit Lazarus and his two sisters. And the Bible says that while he was there, the people heard about him being there and they came and gathered because, you know, previously Jesus has, had raised Lazarus from the dead. So the people went and the Bible says not just to see Jesus, but also to see Lazarus. Because then, you know, all those, who, those who were not there, they heard of the story that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So the Bible says this crowd had gathered you know, the previous day. And then, when Jesus was leaving the um, Bethany, which is where Lazarus and his sisters were, the next day, he was heading to Jerusalem. And the people heard that he was heading now to Jerusalem. The Bible says they gathered now to meet him. Yes. They gathered to meet him. And when they saw him coming and riding, Upon the young donkey, the Bible says now they spread their clothes and they cut branches and spread it in the way so he could ride over those branches and over those clothes. Amen. And the people, you know, they were actually doing and they were not sure about what they were doing. They were actually worshiping but not sure and understood exactly what they were doing. Yeah. Amen? They were actually taking part in something that was much bigger than them. Come on now. Because you see, even shortly after that, you know, many of those same people were the ones who were crying, crucify him. Yeah. Yes. The same ones who were coming and they were worshiping and crying out Hosanna in their eyes and spreading the, the branches and the clothes later on were some of the same ones who cried out, crucify him. Amen. And so we know that these were palm branches because in the book of St. Matthew, it says they cut branches. And But if you go over into the book of John, the Bible, dis, the, the Bible declared that it was palm branches. And that's where we got these palm branches from. You know, growing up in Jamaica, we talk about Palm Sunday. Well, that's where we got Palm Sunday from because the Bible declares in John that these were palm branches that they had cut down and spread in the road. And as Jesus came, you know, they were praising Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So in the book of John, 12 and verse 16 we can read that and it will show exactly that these branches were palm branches yes. and it's very significant Amen. it's very significant that these were palm that they were using palm branches and remember I said that these people they were taking part in something that they were not aware of amen and they went and they cut palm branches and spread and were praising God, not knowing what they were actually doing. 
And the reason why we know that they did not know exactly what they were doing is because even the disciples themselves did not understand what was going on. Amen. Yeah. Because in the book of John 12 and verse 16, the Bible talks about the disciples. It says, these things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remember they that these things were written of him. And that they had done these things unto him. So even his disciples did not know or understood exactly what was going on. You know, they, they heard Jesus told them to go and, and fetch these animals. And, you know, they started spreading their clothes. And they, they saw the crowd, the multitude, you know, worshiping Jesus and praising. But even at that time, the, even the disciples, it did not register to them that this was prophesied in the book of Zechariah. That Jesus, the king, was coming in this fashion. Amen. And so if they had known then more, I believe, would have believed on him. Yes. Amen? If they were following the scriptures, then I believe more would have believed on him when they saw him coming and riding. Amen? Yes. You know, Jesus, at some point, he was talking to the Jews yes. who were, you know, accusing him of breaking the Sabbath. And Jesus turned to them and says, you don't even know my father. You worry about me breaking this Sabbath and you don't even have a relationship with my father. So many of these Jews who were so committed to certain things, they did not know the truth. And they were not committed to the truth. Amen? Because if they were looking, the Bible says, Jesus told them that you know, the Bible, the, 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 the books of Moses spoke of him. So if they were actually committed to the book of Moses and they were actually looking for the Messiah, they would have seen the Messiah in Jesus. But they were so far away from Jesus that they were so committed to just what you do on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, you don't know my father. What a blow. What a blow to someone who is so committed and so serious uh, and takes this Sabbath serious and nothing else can shake me because this Sabbath is what it's all about. And Jesus came and said, you don't know my father. So these multitude of people, this multitude of people were carrying out this act of worship and praise and honor and did not understand what they were doing. They went and they cut their palm branches and they were worshiping and they were praising and they were giving God thanks but did not understand what they were doing. Because the Bible says Jesus' own disciples did not understand what was going on right there and then. They were not ready for what was happening. They were not ready you see, they are not studying the scripture enough and was living by the scripture every day, every part of it, and understand what was going to happen. Amen. And so as it happened, they were not ready for it. But the Bible declares that afterwards, when Jesus was glorified, it came to them. And that's why we have it today. Amen. Today we can say, yes, the scripture was prophesied and it was fulfilled. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. Now listen, as they come and as they were worshiping Jesus, and as they were spreading their palm branches, you have your palm branches ready? Because we're going to practice. As they were worshiping, and as they were shouting, amen, they were getting ready for a bigger, a bigger celebration, but did not understand what they were doing. You see, Jesus was getting, was getting ready to go to the cross. Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. Jesus was getting ready to make it possible so we can come to him. Jesus was getting ready so we can all be gathered together in this sanctuary today to preach about him, to talk about him, to praise him, to read about him. And to speak to all the people all over the world about it. So they did not understand what they were doing. Because Jesus was about to open this thing wide open. 
Amen. Amen. He was getting ready so we can come and celebrate with our palm branches. Amen. Amen. So listen, we are going over into the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. All right. If you have your palm branches, go ahead and get your palm branch ready so we can worship. We can worship. Amen. We can practice. We can practice. So get them ready. Get them ready. The book of Revelation. Amen. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. The book of Revelation. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. We are ready. The book of Revelation. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. And we are going to verse 9. We are going to verse 9. Amen. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. After this, after this, are you ready? After this, amen. The Bible says, after this, after this, after, after what? After this, after what? After this pandemic. That we are facing right now. After all the pain. And the suffering. That we are going through right now. Anybody going through some pain. And some suffering. After all the crime. That we are facing right now. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are you going through some crime. Yes. Do you have some nights when you have to cry. You know I know some nights when I cry. Amen. Amen. So after all the crime. After all the trials yes, and tribulations, yes. anyone going through some trials yes. and tribulations, yes. after all the temptations yes. that we are facing as Christians, anyone being tempted, yes. amen, after all the struggles that we are going through, is anyone facing any struggle? Yes. After all the sicknesses, that we have been facing and been dealing with after all the diseases that are upon the land after your core repossession and one of your core repossess after all the foreclosures that have been taking place after all the financial struggle that we have been going through and one has some financial struggle that you have been facing after all the persecutions that we have been facing as Christians, and who have been facing some persecutions, after all the deaths that we have been seeing, amen. After all the mourning, anyone been mourning? After all the loss of jobs, anyone has lost their job? After all the racism, anyone has faced some racism? The Bible says after this, after this, after these things, John got up and he saw and behold another multitude, a great multitude. This was a different multitude than the one that John saw when Jesus was riding through on the donkey. This is a different multitude that John saw, which no man could number. You see, the multitude that John saw, maybe you could go from the front and the back, and you could multiply and carry the one, and you could do this, and you could come to a solution that that number was this, and that number was that. But John say, this multitude, this multitude, no man could number, no man could count, no man could even imagine. And this multitude was out of every nation, and out of every tribe, and out of every people, and out of every tongue. Oh, 
this multitude was not limited to just the Jews or just the Greek who were there at the time. This multitude is from worldwide and this multitude was standing before the throne of God and before the throne of the Lamb arrayed in white robes with their palms in their hands with their palms in their hands waving their palms in their hands waving their palms in their hands Listen, 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 we are, hallelujah, yes, 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 listen, 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 yeah, as we stand before the throne, listen, listen, yes, 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 the Bible says, listen, we are not alone, the Bible says, and all the angels, all, not some of the angels, all the angels who were on duty, who were here protecting us, all the angels are now with us around the throne, the Bible says in verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worship God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever amen Hallelujah! All of heaven, all of heaven will join us, will join us around the throne of God. All of heaven, all, all of heaven, even the 24 elders, the four beasts. Hallelujah! The 24 elders, the four beasts, and all the angels are going to join us around the throne of God. Waving our palm branches.
Sanchez and praising God. These people that were spreading palm branches and were shouting did not understand what was coming. They didn't understand the day that is coming. They were just doing it, but they didn't understand. There was a reason why they had those palm branches. There's a reason why they went and cut those palm branches without even understanding that we are going to use those palm branches in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All of heaven will come and will surround the throne of God as we gather in the name of the Lord. We are talking about people from all nations. Everyone, all nations who are saved, blood washed, all those who have given their lives to Jesus. We are all going to be standing together. This crowd, the Bible says, is not going to be a mixture of saved and unsaved and those who came to criticize and those who came to watch. The Bible says that all of us will be clothed in white robes. All of us are on the same page. All of us are on the same page. All of us standing with our palm branches in white robes, clothed in white robes, on the same page. Same page. Amen. Amen. Standing before the throne of God, waving and giving God thanks. Giving God thanks for having brought us through. Having brought us through. It wasn't easy, but he brought me through. It wasn't easy, but I did not give up. It was easy, but I held on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says salvation and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. What a day that will be when we are standing around the throne of God, waving our palm branches and giving God thanks and worshiping God and giving God the glory. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Lord, help us to make it in. Amen. Help us to hold on. Help us to continue. Help us to walk this road. Help us to look ahead. Help us to don't turn back. Help us to hold our head straight. Help us, oh God, to be able to say, like Paul, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Hallelujah. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. And then there is laid up for me a crown of life. But God Himself will give unto us. Amen. 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 Do you want that crown of life? Are you ready for that crown of life? Do you want that crown of life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want the crown of life? Jesus says, I have set before you oh, life and death. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. He gave us an end. Choose life. Choose the crown of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Choose the crown of life. It's laid up for us. We are going to be waving our palm branches. We are going to be around the throne of God. Giving him glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. As I come to the close, I just want to say to someone who have not chosen life yet, what are you waiting for? You have not chosen life yet. What are you waiting for? Amen. Listen, time is running out. 
We see what's happening in the world. Time is changing. Don't take it for granted. Time is changing. Listen, listen. The world is not just going to change in one second. The mark of the beast is not just going to happen overnight. Time has to change. It has to systematically change. It has to change slowly. It's not just going to be rushed up upon us. We have to be conscious and be looking out and watching the times and watching the changes because time is changing. Time is winding up. Time is winding up. Time is winding up. So are you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to choose life so you can be around God's throne waving your palm branch and giving God thanks? What are you waiting for? Choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. Choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. Listen, for those who are watching, if you have not chosen life and you want to choose life this moment, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Right now, I want to give you that opportunity. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you to the Lord so you can be ready. Amen. To join with us and all the angels and all of heaven to stand before the throne of God. Amen. Amen. So listen, if you have not accepted Jesus, amen, all those who are watching, if you have not accepted Jesus and you want to accept him right now, I want you to listen to this. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10, it says that we should confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. If we confess with our mouth, then God will save us. Amen. So if you believe that God raised his son Jesus from the dead, amen, you are exercising faith to believe because you were not there. Amen. But as you have read it and you believe it, you are exercising faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. To believe that God sent his son, he died and rose from the dead. If you believe that, and that's you, I'm talking to you, I want you now to pray this simple prayer with me. To receive Jesus in your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe you sent your son to die for my sins. And you raised him from the dead on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood. I am sorry for my sins. I repent this day of my sins. I refuse to continue like this. So I give you my heart. And I give you my soul. And I surrender all to you. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And this moment, I can say, I am saved. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. If you believe and you pray that prayer, you are saved. Amen. And you are ready. Amen. To join with us in heaven around God's throne. Indicate on the screen where you're watching. Amen. If you pray that prayer. If you prayed it, put it on the screen that you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. As we end, we hand over back to our pastor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen.